how the synagogue of Satan controls the channels of public information. At first I couldn't understand how the synagogue of Satan, SOS, could possibly control the publication and sales of newspapers, periodicals, and books throughout the world in order to keep the masses from suspecting that the directors of the conspiracy plan to enslave them body, mind, and soul. Then the study of Robeson's exposure of Weishaupt's 22 United Brethren solved that problem. Weishaupt required that in every reading society and in public libraries, the books to be read would be selected by the managers who serve the Illuminati. After they have molded public opinion, they make the common belief he is uttering his own sentiments when he is actually only echoing the thoughts put into his mind by the books and articles to which he is given access. The booksellers in Weishaupt's day were also the publishers. When Weishaupt, through the Illuminati in their reading societies, controlled the reading of the public, the publishers and booksellers had to print what they wanted to have printed. Weishaupt even used his plan to force authors to write material which directly or indirectly Further the plans of the SOS today authors comply with this requirement or find it impossible to get their work published. To quote his own words Weishaupt wrote, When we by degrees bring the whole trade of book selling into our hands, we shall bring it about that at least the writers who labor in the cause of superstition and restraint will have neither a publisher nor readers. How true those words have turned out to be. Then again he said, when, lastly, by the spreading of the influence our fraternity, all good hearts and sensible men will adhere to us and by our means will be put in a condition that enables them to work in silence upon all courts, families, secretaries, parish priests public teachers and private tutors. This it was that Weishaupt set up the plan to control all channels of public information. Can any unbiased person say that conditions today do not prove that newspapers, periodicals, books, play, TV, and radio only tell the public what those who direct the synagogue of Satan want the public to know? Was there ever a time when men and women over beer? liquor, and cocktails think they are voicing their own opinions when they are simply echoing what they have been forced to read or hear? Was there ever a day, since Weishaupt's time, that agent you of the one worlders controlled the editorial policies of all types of publication, as they control editorial policy today? While double-tongued Illuminus boast about freedom of thought, freedom of religion, freedom of the press, freedom to speak, and freedom from fear, just how much freedom does exist? Let any individual just try to argue against the propaganda put out by the agent Euro of the SOS and he is immediately knocked down, smeared, boycotted, ridiculed, and represented as having a nut loose in the upper story, either that or he is accused of being completely insane. Weishaupt adopted the six-pointed star as one of the emblems of his Illuminati, not because it is the star of David, but because his program consists of six main points. They are as follows. 1. Abolition of all existing governments. 2. Abolition of all existing religions. 3. Abolition of all private property. 4. Abolition of all inheritance. 5. Abolition of the family, as the cell from which civilized society shall develop. 6. Abolition of patriotism, as far as national government are concerned. How can the above objectives form part of a Roman Catholic, Jewish, or Masonic plot to achieve world domination? Pike, Weishaupt's successor, has distinctly stipulated in his works written a century later that 1. The first world government shall be turned into a totalitarian Luciferian dictatorship 2. 
the universal religion imposed upon those of the Goyim, human cattle who survive the final social cataclysm, shall be the true light of the pure doctrine of Lucifer. 3. That all the Goyim shall be enslaved and turned into one vast conglomeration of mongrelized humanity. 4. That breeding will be strictly limited to types and numbers required to fill the requirements of the state, God. 5. That all breeding, as far as the Goyim are concerned, will be done by artificial insemination practiced on an international scale, and limited to 5% of males and 30% of females specially selected for this purpose. 6. That rigid control of the minds of the Goyim shall erase all knowledge of the past, including religions, other than the Luciferian ideology, and of all other forms of government other than the Luciferian dictatorship. Page 58 Satan, Prince of this world because bigotry is used by those who serve the SOS to keep those they plot to subjugate divided amongst themselves on religious and racial issues. I wish to debunk those who claim the World Revolutionary Movement is designed to give Roman Catholics, Communists, Jews, Freemasons, Nazi, or any other political or religious group undisputed world domination. Don't for one moment think I am not fully aware of the fact that there are bigoted, narrow-minded, foolish and utterly deceived Roman Catholics, Communists, Jews, Freemasons, fascists and others who firmly believe that the world's problems will not be permanently solved until the organization to which they belong, be it religious and or political, does rule the world. Most of those who so believe have convinced themselves as Roman Catholics, Jews, Freemasons, Communists, or World Federalists, that if they hope, pray, and work hard enough the day will come when their organization will be able to establish a benevolent dictatorship and enforce rule in accordance with their own religious and so-called democratic principles. These deceived people indeed need enlightenment. The Third World War was planned by Pike nearly a century ago. It is now in the making. The final social cataclysm as he explained it to Mazzini August 15, 1871, and as it has been explained to members of the Paladian Rite and Grand Orient Lodges by lecturers ever since 1885, is to be made to involve not only Roman Catholicism but the whole of the so-called Christian world, and the masses who are now controlled by Communism in Russia and China. Freemasonry and Judaism are also to be destroyed in order that the Luciferian ideology the new order may be established on the ruins of all the old orders. Gentiles and Jews, Communists and Freemasons should not fool themselves. They and their beliefs are all marked down for complete liquidation, as are all other political, religious, social service, and similar organizations. It is intended that there shall be a clean sweep. A purification by the fire of the Magi to prove how ridiculous the charges against Catholicism really are. History proves the Vatican suspended the Jesuits as a teaching order after Weishaupt's perfidy had been made known. This suspension wasn't lifted for many years, I believe it was 30 years. While Weishaupt remained unsuspected, he was happy as a Jesuit. He wore a cloak that hid perfectly his diabolical activities. But when the Jesuits were disbanded by Papal Bull, he showed his true colors and directed the Illuminatus hatred against all members of the Jesuit order. This hatred has been continued by Illuminus against the Jesuits ever since. Jesuit schools and colleges have been closed and the members of the order have been persecuted in every revolution since to prove how ridiculous it is to charge Freemasons with directing the WRM. We have only to study the efforts of Professor Robeson of Scotland, the Duke of Brunswick in Germany, and the Grand Masters of British Lodges, and Captain Henry Morgan of New England, USA, 
made to try to stop Illuminus infiltrating into the lodges of Freemasonry, and to prevent Freemasons fraternizing with Grand Orient Masons, and those of Pike's new and reformed Polydian rites. We must remember also that Cop and Alban Sally was a 33rd degree Mason. He was selected to go beyond that 33rd degree into the mysteries of the Grand Orient Masonry and those of the Polydian Rite. He refused at the very last minute, just before initiation, because he had become convinced that on the other side of the Dark Curtain was Satanism which ruled with absolute despotism. Wise helped revised version of the protocols says exactly how Masons, suspected of knowing too much, shall be disposed of. He sets forth clearly how all forms of Masonry, and other secret societies, are to be abolished once the leader of Luciferianism is crowned king despot of this world. It is equally absurd to contend that Judaism is the root of all evil as it is to claim that protocols, as exposed by Sergi Nihilus, 1905, and Victor Marsden, 1921, are those of the learned elders of Zion. It is true many, far too many, Jews have been deceived into joining revolutionary organizations. But it is equally true that seven years after Lenin usurped absolute power in Russia, on behalf of the synagogue of Satan, there wasn't a single Jewish member of the First International who hadn't been liquidated or imprisoned. We would also like to point out that a great number of real Jews today are not Zionists. They hate political Zionism because they can see clearly that it is designed to lead them to their own ultimate subjugation and destruction as a race. Lucifer is not concerned whether the souls he wins away from God are white or black, Gentile or Jew. All are fish in his net. There are just as few real Jews in the synagogue of Satan today as there were in the days of Jesus Christ. The Duke of Brunswick had been a member of Weishaupt's Illuminati. His nickname was Aaron, but when he found out he had been deceived regarding Weishaupt's real intentions, he did his utmost to stamp Grand Orient Masonry out in Germany. In 1794 he issued a manifesto dissolving Freemasonry in Germany on the grounds that the Illuminati secret agents had obtained such control of it that dissolution was the only remedy left. In 1878 the head of British Freemasons ordered Masons to withdraw completely from all connections with Grand Orient Masonry. Again in 1923 the heads of British Masonry issued the following manifesto regarding Grand Orient Masonry, as recognition was withdrawn from that body by the United Grand Lodge of England in 1878, it is considered necessary to warn all members of our lodges that they cannot visit any lodge under the obedience of a jurisdiction unrecognized by the United Grand Lodge of England, and further, that under Rule 150 of the Book of Constitutions, they cannot admit visitors therefrom. Weishaupt and Pike are both on record as saying Jews, and also anti-Semitism, were to be used to serve their own secret plans and diabolical ambitions. This phase of the conspiracy will be dealt with more fully later. Page 59 Satan Prince of this world we give the above information in order that people who are sincere in their search for the truth may be on their guard against bigots and those who stir up strife based on differences of color, race and or creed. Time after time we have it dinned in our ears, in the press, on TV, by public speakers, by parliamentarians, from pulpits everywhere, all the time. That communism is in reality a fight for possession of the minds of men, and therefore the root of all evil, and responsible for the mess the world finds itself today. That is the biggest lie the S.O. has ever thought up and propagated. But that lie is not one iota different from the lie circulated to enable the S.O.S. to foment World Wars 1 and 2. We were told in America and Britain that Nazism was the root of all evil, and responsible for the chaotic conditions in the world. The masses in Germany, 
and the countries which were to be her allies, were made to believe the same untruths regarding the British and Americans. Hitler wasn't an atheist. He most certainly wasn't a Christian. Therefore he must have been a member of the synagogue of Satan. This allegation is supported by the fact that it was Hitler who said, Tell a big enough lie often enough and it will be accepted as the truth. Winston Churchill isn't a communist or a Nazi, but he can't be much of a Christian either because he said, I will join hands with the devil if by so doing he will help me defeat that. Hitler, before we trace the perfect continuity of the Luciferian conspiracy, as directed and controlled by the human beings who have constituted the synagogue of Satan since 1776, we will first prove that the conspiracy, as revised and modernized by Weishaupt, never did die a natural death as those who directed it since, would have the public, and their elected representatives, believe. The truth is that both communism and Nazism consider only the materialistic concepts of world domination. They seek control of our bodies so that physical control will enable them to control our minds and make us accept their materialistic ideologies. The synagogue of Satan, however, believe in the supernatural and use communism and Nazism to further their own secret plans. The SOS is determined to obtain control of our minds so that it can determine the destiny of our immortal souls. Satanism has been delivering millions of human souls to Lucifer every few weeks. During an all-out war or revolution, the satanic harvest in souls reaches its peak. Don't let yourselves be deceived. Don't let those who serve the devil's cause, regardless of how they are disguised, pull the wool over your eyes. The eyes are the windows of the soul. Then don't let so-called illuminus pull down the blinds over your eyes. Insist on looking out through the window so you can see not only to the horizons of this world but appreciate that the struggle going on in this world is to increase the size of the devil's domains in the celestial world after God renders final judgment. Nesta Webster and other historians confirm what I learned as the result of my own investigations. Directors of Naval Intelligence, and the late Inspector John Leopold, who was in charge of the anti-subversive branch of the RCMP, 1943 to 1945, while I was in Ottawa, and other students of the World Revolutionary Movement, both clerical and secular agree that we are contending with the spiritual forces of darkness. Weishaupt, after he was banished, remained the devil's agent in human form. He directed a Luciferian conspiracy so that it developed into the Great French Revolution and others, including the American Revolution. We will deal later with the reason Weishaupt's plan required the United States of America to become the last great nationalistic world power. Weishaupt's Illuminati, and his lodges of the Grand Orient, went underground. They were succeeded by the Jacobin clubs and convents as has been explained in Pawns in the Game. Mirabeau directed the French Revolution. He was ably assisted by Adrien de Uport, who was also an initiate of the higher degrees of the Illuminati. It was de Uport who set before the Committee of Propaganda the policy of destruction they were to carry out on May 21, 1790. When Weishaupt had destroyed France as a monarchy and a world power, and had Americans cut each other's throat because of alleged grievances which propaganda made appear very real, he then moved to Italy. Illuminism was running hog wild in Italy. Under various names and disguise, it was aimed at the destruction of the Vatican because it was both a spiritual as well as a temporal power. The Italian Illuminus reasoned, how can we destroy all governments and all religions if we don't first of all destroy the Vatican? But this line of reasoning was not in keeping with Weishaupt's plans as we will prove. Italian Grand Orient Masons and Illuminus, and also Vendita members had not been initiated into the full secret. 
According to Weishaupt's plan, as has been confirmed by Mazzini, Pike, Lemmy, and Lenin, the Vatican is to be allowed to survive and control nearly 500 million souls until those who direct the synagogue of Satan decide it is time to involve all Christian people in the final social cataclysm with all people controlled by atheistic communists. For this reason Weishaupt hurried to Italy to prevent a premature destruction of the Vatican. Nearly 100 years later Pike had to take similar action to prevent first Mazzini and later Lemmy from upsetting the synagogue of Satan's plans by doing exactly the same thing. All this proves that only a very few men who comprise the high priesthood of the Luciferian creed know the full secret and how their conspiracy is intended to reach its final goal. Page 60 Satan, Prince of this World